Hello students, welcome to the next session of software engineering. Today we shall be starting with the second chapter of unit number 4 which is related to continuous deployment. So under this particular unit we will be talking about what is containerization. We will be talking about one of the containerization tool which is called as docker. We will learn about what is docker, what is its architecture, what are the internal features that we have in docker, how to run those features what exactly is happening in docker, what is the basic difference between Jenkins and docker, all these things we will be covering in this second chapter of unit number 4. So let us begin our session with understanding what do we mean by containerization. So generally what happens is I have developed say suppose I have developed an application in my local system. Okay, I have given all its necessary configurations, its settings, I have uh, installed all its necessary libraries and all and now in my local system my application is successfully running. Right? So when I share my particular application to one of my colleague, I see that the application is not running in his or her particular laptop. What could be the reason? The reason could be because whatever configurations, whatever settings and whatever libraries I have installed in my local system, those are missing in their particular laptop. That is the reason the application which was successfully running in my system is not running in their particular laptop. Yes, to solve such type of issues. See what happens to solve that one uh, solution will be they have to again configure, they have to do the settings, they have to install the libraries and all, which is a lot of time taking process, yes. And they have to encounter n number of errors while this configurations and all are happening, which you have already seen while you are working with Jenkins, Tomcats and all. Because of configuration issues, if in one system it was working good, but in other system you had n number of errors, which we were slowly resolving. So the architecture of uh, different systems are different, right. So the application which is working in my system is not necessary that it works correctly in your system also. To resolve all such type of issues, we will go to a concept called as containerization. So what exactly are we doing in containerization? Here along with the application that you have developed, you will attach all the necessary tools, uh, libraries, the packages, the settings and all with your application and put it in a docker hub. Now whoever wants to use that particular application of yours will take that uh, application from docker hub and run it in their local system. When they run it in their local system, since you have kept all the necessary things in the form of a container, everything will be pre-installed along with the application and it will give you a ready-made output without any issues. This is called as containerization. Now let us see, understand how this containerization is actually working. See basically what happens is you write a particular configuration file along with your application in which you give all the necessary instructions saying these are the libraries needed to download these libraries, these are the commands, okay to run the application this is the command everything you write it in a configuration file, you attach it to your application. After that you build that particular application into an image. Okay, so image is nothing but a ready made option that you will put it into your docker hub. Now whoever is downloading that particular image, they have to run that image in a container. Okay, so when they run as a container, all this whatever you have packed into an image will now get unzipped. All the installations that you have mentioned in the configuration file will get automatically executed and the necessary output will be displayed on your screen. This is called as containerization, okay. So you can see here, the container makes sure that your application works the same way everywhere, in your computer, someone else or even on the server. This is called as containerization, right. Now let us understand one of the very important containerization tool which is called as Docker. See you in your market you have n number of containerization tools, you have container D, okay, you have so many types of containerization tools but the most famous containerization tool is your docker, okay. So now let us understand what is this docker. So docker as I told you is a containerization tool. So what is it doing? A, your particular docker is helping you to pack your application in the form of a container. That means along with your application you write one configuration file which is called as docker file with all necessary instructions. 
you put your application along with this docker file in a single folder and just by a command saying docker build this complete application along with the docker file will be converted into a docker image that particular docker image you will be pushing it into the docker hub now whoever wants to use that application they will use a command called as docker pull to get that image from docker hub okay and to unzip and execute that application they will use a command called as docker run so when they say docker run the image will now run as a container so let me just give you a very basic live example uh, your docker containers or the docker concept is just like your frozen food so in the supermarkets we get something called as frozen foods so somebody has prepared a recipe with all proper salt masalas ingredients and all the food is now ready so what they do once the recipe everything is ready they pack it uh, okay so that packing is called as docker image that packet will be sent into the supermarket which is nothing but your docker hub now whoever wants to get that frozen food they will purchase from the supermarket that means you are getting your image from the docker hub okay you open that packet you put it into a pan yes so that pan is nothing but your container in your docker what you do you put all that packet uh, ingredients into that pan you heat it just by heating that content inside that con uh, pan your food is now ready to be served the same thing is happening here somebody has written an application with all necessary configurations converted into an image kept it into the docker hub from there you are getting that image running it as a container container in the sense putting it into the pan and heating it running it as a, as a container now your food is now ready to serve that means your image is now ready as an application you whichever using the command you can directly get the output this is the concept of docker so docker is basically a tool that makes containers easy to create and easy to use right now let's talk about the next one which is called as the difference between containers and virtual machines so generally when you talk about a concept called as docker or container people will uh, misuse it or you know they think about it they compare it with virtual machines see virtual machines are different containers are different virtual machines they are uh, very slower and every time they run an application they create a new operating system over your operating system so that means on the top of on your host operating system they create a guest operating system okay because of that they take lot of time to load execute and it's very heavy also right so that means they are occupying lot of memory space your virtual machines whereas what is happening in docker in docker it is not creating any new operating system instead to run that application it is using your own operating system reducing the uh, memory space also that means since it is using your own operating system and your own services it is very lightweight and it is very fast also that is the ba basic difference that you have between the containers and virtual machines okay now let us understand one more important uh, topic under this docker which is called as the docker architecture right so this is basically the docker architecture which consists of three main parts the first part you have is docker daemon the second part you have is docker client and the third part you have is docker registry talking about docker daemon this is basically a back end application to your docker it is responsible to create images run them into the containers give you the output okay all these things are done in this back end application which is called as docker daemon on front of it you have a front end application which is called as docker client this acts as a mediator between the user and your docker so here this particular client will allow the user to give command line instructions like docker uh, version so when you type docker version what will happen your client is going to take that command and give it to the docker daemon now docker daemon is uh, will execute that command make sure that it is getting the version of the docker and gives the output to the client now the client will display that output so docker client is a front end application uh, which give which allows the user to enter the command line instructions back end you have is a docker daemon which will execute those instructions now the third part of your docker architecture is your docker registry this is nothing but your docker hub inside this you have all the images okay so if you want to push your application as an image or if you want to get a new application uh, as an image then you can 
find everything in this Docker registry. Okay, so these are the three main parts that you have in your Docker architecture. Now, inside your Docker daemon, you can see that there are something called as containers and images. So just now I told you, Docker image is a template which is ready to get executed. So your application is now ready to get executed in the form of Docker image. Okay, now to execute that application, you have to convert this Docker image into Docker container using the command Docker run. Okay, so you, your image will be executed as containers. So this is all about your Docker architecture, right? So Docker daemon, Docker client, all these are nothing but your architecture. Now let's understand how exactly does this Docker work? So say suppose I have created an application and I want to convert it into an image so that somebody else can use that particular application. The first thing you have to do is to write a Docker file. Just now I told you it is a uh, configuration file. So you have to write a Docker file which is a recipe to your container, right? Now after that along with your application, your Docker file and the application must be built. So what is happening in build? Your application along with the Docker file is getting converted as an image and now you will store that image into Docker Hub. After that you can pull that image and you can run it as a container. So this is how your Docker will actually work, right? Now uh, let's see an example of your uh, Docker file, right? So I was talking about uh, along with your application, you will be attaching configuration file which is called as the Docker file. So this is just an example. Let me just show you this example. So in the first line, I'm telling that uh, use Python 3.9 version to run this application. After that, before running this application, create a folder with the name called as app from the image copy all the contents into this folder called as app okay now this particular uh, application to get executed needs one file called as requirements.txt install this file using the command pip install hyphen r requirements.txt okay then uh, what you have to do then you, to execute this particular application, I am telling use the command python space app.py, right? So your application will be installed and the output will be displayed on the port number called as 5000. So automatically everything will be executed just by saying docker run space image name. All these things will get automatically executed and in a browser under the local host port number 5000 you will get the output of the application which is called as app.py. So this is a Python application. So this is how you have to write a Docker file which contains all the necessary configurations, okay? Now let's talk about one more very important concept in Docker which is called as Docker Compose. See up till now we spoke about a single image running it as a container. Now some applications what happens is they have front end and back end. Okay, in, the, in that case what happens is you have to run multiple images in multiple containers, right? So when you are running multiple images in multiple containers, instead of running them separately, you can combine everything into a single folder and with a single command, you can execute n number of containers. So like this, okay, you have multiple images which needs to be running as multiple containers, okay? Now, Instead of executing them separately, what you do is you take help of a file which is called as docker compose. This is generally a YAML file. So in this docker compose file, you give all the list of images that you want to execute together. So you give all the images information here and just by a single docker run command, all these images will be executed at a time. This is generally used when you want to, when your application is having a front end and a back end. Like for example, say suppose you have a WordPress. So WordPress will be having a front end UI application, back end it will be having a database like MySQL or something. So if you want to run both of this together, then you have to go for this Docker Compose. So the, generally Docker Compose file is used to run multiple containers in Docker. Okay. So... The next one you have to learn about is this Docker repository, which is also called as the Docker Hub. So as I told you, n number of images will be stored in your repository or hub, which can be pushed and pulled whenever you want. Generally, there are a uh, they are free to pull and push, right? So now that you understood what is Docker, 
let me just give you a very small difference between Jenkins and Docker. So, Jenkins is basically an automation tool which will automate the process of building, testing and deploying the application. Now, where does Docker fit in Jenkins? So, after you build and test your application before deploying it, you can send that application to Docker which will put it into a container along with all necessary dependencies and give it to Docker so that it can deploy in any environment. So, when that Docker file gets deployed in n number of environments, in every environment it is running the same. So, this is basically the difference between Jenkins and Docker. Okay? So, let us wind up this session by understanding what are the various advantages and disadvantages uh, you have related to the Docker. So, why I have to use Docker? Docker should be basically used because if you want your application to run the same in every environment, then you have to use this Docker. And Docker when compared to the virtual machines is very lightweight, it is very fast. Okay? And you can even manage complex applications which are having n number of images by running them in a multi container environment using docker compose. Okay, it makes things very easier with single command, right? And docker hub also is allowing you to store all predefined images and containers making your things easier to find in whichever location you want. So, these are basically the reasons why we have to learn about docker. So, this is all about the introduction to docker. Thank you.